this video will discuss the orthogonal cutting so basically there are two basic methods of metal cutting using a single point cutting tool first is called as the orthogonal and second is called as oblique cutting that is 2d and 3d orthogonal cutting takes place when a cutting face of a tool is 90 degree to the line of action of the tool if the cutting face is inclined at an angle less than 90 degree it is called as orthogonal cutting so we will consider in this case the orthogonal cutting let us consider this is the workpiece this one is a tool and this tool is fed in this direction so it will cut this part so let us say it has done the cutting up to this portion so tool is fed in this direction so there is a feed and the same direction we have cutting velocity so this thickness that equals to t1 t1 is called as uncut chip thickness and because of this one the chip will flow so the material will cut here and the chip will flow along this direction so this is the formation of chip perpendicular to this face we have the chip thickness t2 so t2 is the chip thickness at this point so we define here one ratio called as chip cutting ratio or cutting ratio this cutting ratio is defined as the ratio of t1 by t2 here t1 is always less than t2 so this ratio is always less than unity the term k which is defined as 1 by reciprocal of the chip thickness ratio is called as chip reduction coefficient so we will set our angle at this point y axis and we make this equals to x axis so this angle of the rake face with this vertical axis y is called as rake angle gamma here this plane that is along this rake face is called as friction plane and where the cutting will takes place that plane is called as shear plane so where the cutting action takes place so this one is called as shear plane so we have two planes one is this plane that is called as the friction plane because the friction will take place between the chip and the tool and along this one we have cutting so this one is called as shear plane the angle made by the shear plane is phi with horizontal phi is called as shear angle before we start our analysis of mechanics there are certain assumptions in the orthogonal cutting so we will first consider the assumptions in the orthogonal cutting the first assumption says that there is no contact the flank so there is no contact at this point that is the tool is perfectly sharp second assumption is made is the width of the chief remain constant so what are the width here of this workpiece like this so that width and the width of the chief is always remain constant while machining we assume that the cutting velocity vc always remain constant the fourth assumption is that our material is ductile and the continuous chief is produced without any built up edge so these are the four assumptions we will use this now the velocity along this one will be called as vs that is the velocity along the shear plane and the velocity of chip is measured along the friction plane so that we called as vf so vf is chip velocity and vs is shear velocity so vs is called as the shear velocity or shear plane velocity or the velocity and the vf is called as the velocity of the chip or the velocity of chip related to the tool the fifth assumption is made that the volumetric changes the material during machining is zero so volumetric changes of material during machining zero implies that the volume before the cut is same as volume after the cut so the volume before the cut will be defined as will be equals to t1 multiplied by width multiplied by the length l1 is equals to t2 multiplied by v multi width multiplied by the length of chip that equals to l2 so width is constant because of option number 2 so we have t1 by t2 that equals to our r so we have another relation for r which is basically t1 by t2 now this time it will be equals to the length of chip is cut out that is l1 suppose we have a width here that is this is the width v and then this will be the cross section so this cross section is perpendicular to vc so this one is t1 this one is b so we can say that the volumetric flow rate that equal to t1 multiplied by v multiplied by vc will be same as the volumetric flow rate for chip also which is the thickness equals to t2 width equal to b and the corresponding velocity will be equals to vf so t1 multiplied by b is this area and this vc is perpendicular so this will be the volumetric flow rate here and t2 is the thickness at this point is the same width equal to b and perpendicular velocity will be equals to vf so this t1 by t2 can also be written as vf divided by vc so we have three relations so r can be calculated in any of these three way depending upon the data given to you uh, this gamma that is a rake angle shear angle and the chip thickness ratio let's consider this triangle this one is t1 let's say this point is a point 
this point is B point and perpendicular to this one is C point. So I will draw this point here this equals to A. This one is our shear plane. So this angle is equals to 5 this is horizontal and somewhere we would show the thickness T1. In this case we have T1 is opposite and AB is hypotenuse. So we have sin phi equal to T1 divided by AB. So perpendicular to this face this one is our T2. So let us say this point equals to D point. So this angle is 9 phi. So this one is 90 minus phi. So this angle is 90 minus phi. 90 minus phi plus gamma and you take a sign of this so opposite is T2 and this is a hypotenuse because this one is 90 degree. So is T2 divided by AB. Now sine of 90 minus phi minus uh, minus phi plus gamma can also be written as sine of 90 minus phi minus gamma and this term is same as equals to what cos of phi minus gamma. So if we consider the first equation that is T1, T1 will be equals to sine phi multiplied by AB, AB and sine phi and from here you get T2. This term is same as cos of this one. So we get T2 equals to AB multiplied by cos of phi. So we can get the ratio of T1 by T2. What we want is that the relation between T1 by T2 that is R, phi and gamma. So we will just take the ratio of these two terms. In that case AB will be get cancelled. This term will be same as R divided by cos of phi minus gamma. So we have R equals to sin phi. Cos of phi minus gamma can be expanded as cos of phi into cos of gamma plus sin of phi into sin of gamma. So I can get rid of this uh, cos phi here. So by dividing both numerator and denominator by cos phi. So if we divide it by cos phi and whole term is again divided by cos phi here. So what we get is r equals to this one is tan phi divided by cos phi and cos phi will be cancelled. We will get cos gamma plus sin phi upon cos phi is tan phi into sin of gamma. So we will simply cross multiply and we will expand this term. So we will get r into cos gamma plus r into tan phi into sin of gamma equals to tan of phi. So this one is tan phi and this one is also tan phi. So we will shift tan phi on one. So this term entire term will shift to the left side. We will get tan phi minus r of tan phi into sin gamma and only term left is r cos gamma. So we can take out tan for tan phi common. So what we left is tan phi is 1 minus r multiplied by sin gamma which is a rake angle is same as r cos of gamma. So finally we can solve for phi and what you get is the calculated equation is relation between phi r and gamma tan phi is equals to r into cos of gamma that is this term divided by 1 minus r sin gamma. So remember this equation tan phi equals to r cos gamma upon 1 minus r sin gamma. Now we will develop the relation between the Vf, Vs and cutting velocity Vc. So Vc is going this way, Vf is going this way and Vs is, Vs is going this way and Vf is going this way. So we have three velocity. The first velocity is going along this way is called as cutting velocity. One velocity is going this way that is called as shear velocity making an angle of phi and the third velocity is going along this one is called as cheap velocity. Now the cutting velocity gets exhausted between the Vf and Vs. So we will draw one more figure here. So if I say this one is Vc, the cutting velocity. This uh, velocity is approximate. Vf is perpendicular to this plane. So what we do is that we will construct here this vertical line. So this one is our Vf. So this angle is gamma. So this angle is also equals to what? Gamma. And this one is Vf. Naturally this angle is 90 minus gamma. The shear velocity makes an angle of phi. So shear velocity makes an angle of phi. So this one is Vs. It makes an angle of phi. So angle made between Vf and Vs will be approximately equals to 90 minus of phi minus gamma. We will check out this. Uh, the total sum must equal to what? 180. So this phi and this phi cancel. This gamma and gamma cancel. 90 and 90, 180. So this figure is correct. So we can apply the sine law to this. And according to the sine law, it is known that the length of the side of the triangle is proportional to the sine of the angle opposite to it. Say for example, I am writing VC. So opposite to VC is this angle that equal to sine of 90 minus phi minus gamma. Then second side is VS. Opposite to VS is 90 minus gamma. 
and for vf with the opposite side is phi. Now we can use the property here that sine of 90 minus theta is same as cos theta. So what we get is vc divided by cos of phi minus gamma. Then see this 90 minus gamma can be written as cos of gamma and finally we have vf which is no change is same as sine phi. So this is also one of the important relation used normally but I, do, I will advise you not to remember this equation rather than this they will give the value of gamma they will give the value of r once we know the value of gamma and r using this relation we can find out phi equals to 10 and phi is equals to 30 suppose then we can draw this triangle very quickly so we have here vc then we have vs and we have here vf so this one is vf this one is vs we know that this angle is what gamma that equal to 10 so this one is 10 so this must equal to what 80 this one is 5 is equals to what 30 30 plus 80 is what 110 so this angle is 70 now you can apply the sign law this is cutting velocity so we simply have cutting velocity equals to sine of 70 equals to vc vs divided by this angle that is sine 80 is equals to vf divided by sine of 30 now this calculation become much simple now so you use this equation that is known value of gamma and phi from this calculate all angles and then use a simple sine equation don't use this formula it's very difficult to remember this formula so right now we have one formula is this and i will not say this is a formula you just make one triangle so just write, apply the sine law 